Hi everyone, and welcome to the Microphone Tense Decision Framework session. Today, I'm going to introduce you to this mental model that will allow you to design any microphone tense architecture following few key uh, pillars and cascade all the other decisions. My name is Luca Mezzalira. I'm a principal solution architect in AWS. I'm an international speaker and I'm an O'Reilly author. So let's start with the definition of microphone tense. So microphone tense are a technical representation of a business subdomain. They allow independent implementation with same or different technology, and they minimize the code share with other subdomains, and they are owned by a single team. So as you can see in this definition, I highlighted five key parts. So the first one is that uh, microphone tents uh, are a representation of a business subdomain. If you're familiar with domain-driven design, a subdomain is just a portion of a full domain. So imagine like a portal like Netflix, uh, the uh, main domain is uh, having the possibility to watch content anytime, anywhere. Um, and one, uh, obviously it's a very complex project to deliver and therefore you need to divide in multiple subdomains. An example of subdomain for Netflix could be the subscription or the uh, customer uh, center. So microphone tents, are the slides following those uh, ideas of domain-driven design. So identifying the subdomains and then this define what a microphone tent is. A microphone tent is definitely not a component and uh, we shouldn't uh, look at or interpret them in, in that way. A component is an abstraction for a specific uh, technical challenge that should be um, uh, used in, in for creating, for instance, um, a design system. Uh, just to give you an example. But the microphone 10 could be more than that, could be a, a representation of a specific business subdomain. Moreover, uh, they are uh, independent. So when I have a microphone 10, I can deploy independently uh, a microphone 10 and generate value for my user. It's very important that we highlight this uh, part of independency of microphone tents because the moment that you have multiple microphone tents that has to be deployed uh, every time together, probably you didn't do a good job on slicing uh, the application. Or moreover, it could be that your business change in a way that you need to rethink the way how you slice your microphone tents. They use same or different technologies. So um, the same thing that is true for a um, for single page application or server side rendering one is true also for microphone tents. So, Technically speaking, you can apply multiple UI frameworks, for instance, in the same single page, page application, but no one would do that because it will affect the performances. The same here, despite that microphone dance enable you to use multiple technologies, doesn't mean that you have to, to embrace that. Moreover, I think it is, uh, there is a specific use case where microphone tents could help you um, on using multiple uh, technology choices uh, without uh, creating any, any potential issue in the long run. And usually, usually is when you are porting an existing application, like a, a legacy application, towards microphone tents. So for a certain period of time, maybe you have uh, the same UI framework uh, with different technology choice with different versions, or you can have different uh, technology choices and have I don't know in uh, the legacy application you're using Angular and in the new application you're using Vue.js for instance. So those are specific. This is a specific use case where I can see microphone tens can handle uh, in a really nice way because you iteratively uh, produce value for your customer very quickly. You should minimize the code sharing with microphone tens. Uh, you should really think twice if you are optimizing for speed and independency for team, or you're optimizing for consistency and therefore um, uh, you are sharing more code. But either way, you need always to ask yourself twice if it's really the right time for abstracting the code and share across multiple microphone tens, because you are creating an external dependency in a, um, in a distributed system, and that could cause uh, quite a few challenges for communication from communication overhead uh, to a standardization that maybe is not needed for, for specific uh, um, workloads. 
Finally, the ownership part. Often we forgot that we should have an owner of a specific uh, part of our application. Moreover, it doesn't mean that the ownership should be only for one single team. It could be that they have multiple teams contributing to the same microphone like end, but in reality, just the team that is owning the responsibility of, of uh, deploying and maintaining that microphone then should decide if uh, or not merge uh, pull requests that are proposed by other teams. So if we want to go more in concrete, microphone tents uh, could be, uh, for instance, take for instance a legacy application like a single page application. We we start to identify the different subdomains. Could be the authentication domain, could be the catalog, it could be the the uh, landing page, and so on and so forth. And we create independent artifacts that would allow us to uh, uh, to deploy. It could be even more granular. And you say you have uh, I don't know uh, the payment form that should be available in multiple views. You can reach that specific granular. But again, always look from a business subdomain uh, point of view and not from a, a components point of view. So microphone tents uh, are leveraging certain principles that are very similar to what you get with uh, microservices. When I started to look into microphone tents uh, six years ago, uh, I thought that, that creating some principles would allow to create a North Star that everyone could follow in order to make sure that they are going towards the right direction. So the first is uh, modeling around business domain. We talk extensively about this point. The second point is decentralization. So if before we have a tech leadership team that could take vast majority of the decisions, now you, have, you are empowering the teams that are, that are business experts uh, and domain experts. And in this case, what happens is that, yes, the, the tech leadership should create some boundaries or guardrails uh, where uh, every team should strive, therefore deciding the frameworks that are, uh, that are going to be used for a specific project or the libraries for logging and observability. But inside those boundaries, the team should have the creativity and freedom to uh, innovate inside there. Um, and therefore, certain decisions, for instance, which design pattern to implement should be tackled by, by the team itself. And it doesn't have to be coordinated externally. Therefore, a decentralization concept is very powerful and uh, it's not always easy to implement um, in, in every organization, but has to be taken into consideration because it's the only way to work effectively at, at speed uh, with uh, decentral distributed systems. And another thing that uh, uh, you need to think about is the culture of automation. If before we were used to create once our automation pipeline for delivering our single page application, for instance, uh, now we need to iterate very often on our automation pipelines because at the end of the day, we are creating multiple um, uh, automation pipelines. Therefore, a way to replicate very quickly and also a way to innovate inside uh, and optimize your code inside a specific automation pipeline. Usually, the tech leadership is defining which tool to use uh, for uh, running the automation pipeline, but the team is responsible for defining the code that uh, is optimizing their code base uh, and therefore their microphone tents for deploying into, into uh, different environments. Independent deployment, as we said before, is very important. Every microphone tent is independent, and uh, uh, you keep this separation of concern very strong, and that will uh, allow you to strive and work at speed when we think about um, microphone tents. Hide implementation details is very important. Obviously, in, in any software, you need to have a, a communication between different parts and the four different teams. And one thing that I highly recommend is working with API uh, contract first. Therefore, you work with, I don't know, for instance, imagine that you have a team responsible for the design system and you have uh, multiple microphone tents that are going to consume this shared library. So in that case, uh, having, uh, um, um, let's say, regular catch up to understand how the contract works and you can work in parallel without any surprise is definitely a best practice. Uh, therefore, uh, it's very, very important that you work in parallel and uh, and you define uh, with regular catch up uh, the, the API that are going to consume, uh, because in that case, you will that this will allow to uh, going in, in the same direction and not find surprise during the implementation phase. Finally, there is a new dimension that we uh, are looking for when we talk about microphone tests. This is the, 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 the failure. So potentially you can have, uh, I don't know, four uh, out of five microphone tests downloaded, uh, but the fifth one is not available, maybe due to bug in production or even because uh, uh, the network of the, the customer is not great. So how can you create a great user experience for your users despite there are those issues? Those are uh, decisions that you need to, to, to think about every time that you are composing microphone tests.
So let's move to, to the decisions framework that again is a mental model for approaching micro frontends architectures. So I identify four key de decisions that you need to make up front. Those doesn't mean that are uh, that you cannot change. Potentially, you can change during the project, but in reality, those are very difficult to change. The moment that you are going to change them, then you risk to cause uh, some uh, uh, slowdown on the development. Therefore, be mindful on approaching that. So the first one is define a microfrontend. Usually, you can have two ways to handle microfrontends. You can have multiple microfrontends in the same view, or you can have a microfrontend that represent uh, at one or multiple views. So in the first option is what I call horizontal split, where you have multiple teams operating in the same view. Uh, the classic use case could be an e-commerce where you want to have, uh, I don't know, the personalized uh, element of your uh, system that is available in multiple views. Or uh, you have, uh, I don't know, a specific uh, area like the payment uh, microfrontend that you want to be available in different flavors in different views. So usually that is the use case that you want to have. So when you have a microphone then that can be reusable uh, in multiple places and you have many teams working together. Um, a classic example that is uh, leveraging this, this approach is, for instance, the Amazon Marketplace that is using this define uh, by having multiple teams working on, uh, the, on the same view. Uh, on the other side, we have a more, uh, let's say, uh, controlled uh, way to manage a microphone tent. So imagine that you have multiple uh, single page applications that are composing the final result, the final platform. So uh, in the case, for instance, about uh, Netflix that we make the example before, uh, you can imagine to have, for instance, the catalog that is a unique microphone tent. You can have the, the authentication microphone tent is taking care about the sign in, sign up, and so on and so forth. So as you can see, you can slice it into different ways. So in the vertical split, as you can see on the right of this uh, slide, uh, usually is used when you want to have full control of uh, uh, the, the page and you want to create a very immersive experience, like with animations, and you can have, uh, let's say, a more control on, on the final outcome of a specific thing. Yeah, also, usually, uh, you work in this way when you don't have too many teams. And when I say no, not too many teams working on the same application, I'm talking less than 10. And that could be uh, a good uh, a good way to to, to handle uh, uh, your microphone dance application. So again, this is the definition of microphone dance. So let's see uh, the the pros and cons of this solution. So the first one is the horizontal split require an upfront investment. If you want to streamline your developer experience, you need to create a way that allows you to work quickly and smoothly uh, on uh, different microphone tents. There are uh, different ways that you can do that. Sometimes there are companies that are building their own solution. Nowadays, there is a very interesting uh, implementation uh, inside um, Webpack with the module federation that, that is streaming line the developer experience uh, of uh, working with horizontal or vertical split uh, architectures. The other thing is team structure. Uh, when you have multiple teams that are working on the same view, you need to uh, have a team or a committee of people that are responsible for the final result of the page. Then testing challenges. Uh, obviously, if you have multiple uh, microphone tents, unit testing and integration testing are not a challenge. But when you go with end-to-end -end testing and you have multiple teams responsible for the final result, every microphone tent has to be uh, responsible the end-to-end -end testing for his application deployed in multiple views. And therefore, that could be uh, another challenge that you need to think about. Scalability challenges. If you decide to, to compose your microphone tents, and we will see later on what it means for that, but if you decide to have uh, and create your microphone tent in a server side rendering fashion, then you need to have uh, a scalability layer that are applied to the, um, uh, let's say, composition level, so the server side, uh, where you take care about the traffic patterns that you are exposed to. Therefore, if you have burst traffic, you need to scale your layer uh, very quickly, and you need to take into consideration that, that part as well. Finally, dependency management. Uh, you can risk with a uh, horizontal split with different implementation that currently uh, you, you have like same library used by multiple microphone tents, but in uh, with different version, and there could be a clash on that. Therefore, it's very important that you think about the um, uh, dependency management that, once again, is very uh, helpful uh, when, uh, uh, when, you, when you think about module federation because it's taking care for you about those, uh, those, those potential challenges.
On the vertical split side is a more traditional development. Is if you're familiar to uh, write single page application, you will be familiar to create vertical split applications. Um, you can embrace fully the JavaScript ecosystem because uh, obviously it's uh, you don't have to create your own tools uh, for uh, testing your microphone in isolation or create uh, let's say custom tools for for testing and so on and so forth. You just use what is available right now. Finally, often we think that a single page application are not great for uh, SC for such a search engines and crawlers uh, and but in reality there is a technique called dynamic rendering was released by google a few years ago that allows you to serve an optimized version of your single page application to crawlers i invite you to to check it out when we talk about uh, composition side, uh, we have three options. So the first one is on the client side. So you have like your uh, static arti uh, artifacts that maybe are stored uh, in, uh, in uh, origin that could be served by an application server or by a solution like S3, AWS S3. And then you have a, a CDN that basically is caching your static assets and, and reduce the latency uh, for uh, passing those um, static assets to the client. And on the client side, you have what is called an application shell that basically is composing the different microphone tents. In this case, you can use a vertical or horizontal split, and the client is responsible for composing the, the final view. Interesting enough, this approach works uh, with horizontal and vertical, but the, the vertical split, when you decide to go with that approach, uh, usually the client side composition is the only one that uh, you should pick because the other two are less, that's why technically feasible, but less meaningful and less approachable for vertical split architecture. Therefore, remember, vertical split architecture, you always compose uh, on, on the client side. Second one is uh, edge side include. So it's basically the edge side composition. Edge side include is a markup language that is available in certain CDNs only that will allow you to create placeholders that are replaced at the CDN level uh, um, for every microphone 10. So potentially you can have a, a page that contains, I don't know, the uh, sign up uh, microphone 10 and you just add in uh, with edge side include that specific um, uh, tag and automatically when the page is about to be rendered and served to the client on, on the CDN level, uh, you are composing the page and serve to the client. The drawback of this approach is that obviously it's not all the CDNs are uh, use, uh, are embracing uh, edge side include language, uh, only a few and some of them are not fully implementing the entire system. Uh, moreover, the uh, other problem is is that when you use when you have like personalized content or anything that is dynamic, using this technique will force you to add some logic on the client side that will allow you to fetch the data to, to render. Therefore, you need to supplement the implementation with a client side include that is a, a transclusion technique for uh, um, let's say replace certain microphone tents on the client side instead of the edge side. Uh, the uh, plus of this technique is that uh, obviously if you have very static website and you want to uh, serve to millions of customers, uh, you can do that without too many problems because you are scaling with the power of the CDNs. The, the other solution is a composition on server side where you have uh, your application server that is composing and maybe server side render certain part of the application and then you can use a CDN for caching uh, the final result and serve to the, to the client. It's probably the most flexible and most powerful but is also the most complex one to put together mainly because uh, you need to take into consideration uh, another dimension that is the, the traffic pattern that you're going to have inside your uh, application and considering that sometimes burst traffic uh, are difficult to handle you need to be uh, very wise when you are implementing uh, this this thing also on how you're going to cache your content uh, and not only on the uh, static asset side but also for instance a response for microservices uh, and so on and so forth so uh, you need definitely to put more thought uh, on, uh, on on this uh, type of uh, implementation Routing side, uh, we, when you have a composition that is happening on the client side, the routing can happen uh, on the application shell level or, or the CDN level. There are CDNs like AWS CloudFront that allows you to run a computation layer called Lambda at the Edge, or uh, recently we announced also Cloud Functions uh, that allows you to do interesting stuff like canary releases uh, or uh, strangle applying the strangle pattern at the CDN level. That will allow you uh, basically to run a small script in, in JavaScript that will allow you to, to, to do these kind of things. That is great. But at the same time, uh, you can do that uh, similar thing also on the client side if you are more familiar with that and therefore the application shell will contain also some logic for uh, applying the strangler pattern or for applying uh, canary releases for instance 
Uh, then the routing uh, on edge side, include this happening edge side. There is a correlation one to one uh, between uh, the the view and uh, um, and the URL. Therefore, for every URL, you need to go to the CDN, will be a composition, another composition for a new page, and then it will be served to the client. Same thing happening on the um, um, server side composition, uh, server side routing, where the, the, the composition is happening one to one, uh, and every view corresponds to one route, and the routing is happening application server. So basically, when you work with server side composition, uh, you have the routing and the composition happening at the uh, server side. Then you have communication between microphone tents. So usually uh, you have to take into consideration when you embrace horizontal split, the communication between different microphone tents in the same view. My suggestion is avoid to use a, 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 like a global state for that specific uh, uh, view for collaborating between microphone tents because you are basically coupling multiple microphone tents. That is exactly the thing that you shouldn't do. Uh, in a distribute system, usually you tend to communicate with uh, events in this case. So it could be an event emitter that is injected inside the microphone 10. It could be custom events that you append on the window object. It could be a reactive stream, if you're familiar with them, or even a signals library. So all of them are way to decouple completely the, the microphone 10 uh, and therefore deploying in any view without the need to share code uh, across um, that is common between microphone 10. Moreover, uh, I think this uh, this approach uh, allows you to define very uh, very well uh, what are the input of your microphone tents and the output of your microphone tents. Uh, either that you are picking vertical or horizontal split, uh, you need to uh, share uh, information across different views, and therefore there are two ways mainly to do that. The first one is local session storage and cookies for what concern uh, meaningful data, like for instance a JWT token that you want to share uh, across multiple microphone tens, and therefore the microphone ten that is signing in, the user is authenticated, the user store the JWT token in cookies or local session storage. And then, uh, and then the other microphone tents, uh, they are uh, retrieving the JWT token directly from those uh, way in those way. But if you have, for instance, more uh, uh, let's say uh, volatile data, like for instance the ID of a specific product that the user want to see, you can pass this in query string. So in that case, uh, for instance, you can pass the ID of a specific product, and then all the microphone tents will retrieve uh, this information through the query string and will perform, uh, will fetch the data from application server uh, logic. So those are, let's say, the key part of microphone tents. But obviously, it's not just that, right? So there is more that we need to take into consideration. So the other challenges that you will face when you are embracing microphone tents uh, are, for instance, automation. So how you're going to, to deal with automation. And again, those challenges, think about them like uh, all the decisions you're going to make are cascading after the, the, the four pillars that I just uh, showed you. So for instance, in the case of automation, obviously, if you have a, a, an horizontal split, you have smaller artifacts, therefore, uh, potentially, the, all your um, automation pipeline is really fast because the artifacts are really small. But obviously, you have many of them. You can end up with having hundreds of them, potentially, if the application is very large. On, on the other side, if you have vertical split, you have less artifacts, and therefore, the automation Maybe it's less fast, but at the same time, uh, uh, you just apply uh, once uh, on specific vertical and specific business domain. So as you can see, for any challenge that I'm going to introduce you now, those pillars are very important because you will uh, face and you will, uh, let's say, adjust your strategy based on the decision you made before. Observability is another one. So uh, if before... Maybe you, you don't uh, use uh, libraries like Sentry or LogRocket or uh, New Relic Browser. Uh, now, I think it's very uh, valid the, the, um, having a strong observability strategy for your microphone tents because the moment that are, uh, let's say, uh, having, you are having some issues in production, having an observability library that allows you to identify quickly uh, where the problem is, uh, is definitely a, a big plus. Code sharing, uh, once again, uh, try to figure out what's the best uh, thing uh, to, to share because the moment that you are sharing code, you may create an abstraction that is not needed. And usually the wrong abstraction could be more expensive than the duplicated code. So be mindful in the way how you are uh, deciding to handle this.
Design system is a big, big topic because uh, obviously many people are thinking that design system are not applicable in distributed system. In reality, it is. So they, I think the uh, main challenge on design system is not creating one, but is more the governance around it. How do you enforce that every microphone tent is up to date? So my suggestion is if you have the possibility to use web components for sharing uh, the code on the design system, do it. Because in reality, also, if you're using just one UI framework for your microphone tents, you never know uh, if, if the project is maybe, I don't know, 10 years or in, in your pipeline. Maybe you want to change after three years, four years, wherever it is, different technology. And therefore, at least the design system would be agnostic from, from the UI framework that you're going to pick. At the same time, it's not always possible. There are certain uh, workloads that um, doesn't allow you to, to use web components due to the constraint of the system. Therefore, also having, uh, uh, let's say, a, spe a specific UI framework implementation of your design system could be a, a, a possibility. Therefore, the context you should drive the decision on that. On the governance side, I would recommend to add some check uh, happening at automation pipeline uh, and verify that uh, every microphone tent is using the, the, the latest design system version. So there you have obviously two options usually. One is enforcing and blocking the creation of the artifacts or just notify the team they need to update to the latest version. Uh, both things are okay. It obviously depends from what you are optimizing for. Full consistency or you, have, you provide a bit of slack to, to your developers. Performance-wise, it may be a challenge. However, um, because every team is empowered to take certain decisions, they can really optimize and nail down uh, their business domain. Moreover, I would recommend to create a performance committee across the different, uh, let's say, a system that could be uh, led by, by the the tech leadership in this case that would check that everything is going to the right direction and that you don't have, let's say, uh, some megabytes to download from the application. And I think it's very good because then you, the, this tech leadership team could also surface best practices and patterns that can be applicable to uh, multiple domains. Uh, this is usually a, a good way to handle that. And finally, organization structure. Organization structure is not static. You need to design your architecture and then understand if your organization is uh, ready to embrace that specific architecture. Sometimes the answer is yes, sometimes it's not. Sometimes the answer could be yes, but then in six months time, the business change uh, considerably and then you need to reassess your organization. Therefore, uh, don't start with a specific uh, architecture structure because it is what it is. You really need to, to understand if the organization structure will, will allow you to uh, strive in a distributed system environment. Finally, it's very important for me to, to say that architecture is always a trade-off. There isn't right or wrong. You need to find the right balance inside your context. Therefore, spend quality time to understand your context. And then uh, based on that, you will take uh, your decisions. And here are a list of resources that I wanted to add you uh, to this talk. I will share the slide on social, so feel free to, to follow me. And, he, and here you can go more in deep about uh, different uh, topic uh, on, on microphone tests. So that's it for me. Thank you very much for having me. It was a pleasure. I hope you really enjoyed the session and feel free to reach me out anytime. Uh, and thank you again. Have a nice rest of the conference.